follow the success, as I always say. If you're if you're just busy losing and losing over and over again, time to do a bit of a shake up. Time to rethink what you're doing. Time to do something new. Something in time to do something different. Welcome to the Inspired to Thrive podcast. I'm your host, Phoebe Lay, and in each episode, I will be sharing with you insights from either an inspiring person or myself to help you thrive and shine online and in person. We talk about all things marketing, relationships, money, business, growth, mindset, and more. So thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you inspired to thrive. Inspired to Thrive and Shine podcast. I'm very, very excited today because not only are we live streaming this on LinkedIn with the legendary Edward Zia, who is a phenomenal LinkedIn user, Microsoft fan, and also someone that teaches other business owners, influencers, people that are bringing, you know, bringing their message, sharing it into the world, sharing it with the world. Um, Not only does he help them get well known on LinkedIn, but he has an incredible story to share and and, and and a life experience that is beyond comprehensible. So Edward Zia, I'm very excited to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me live. Oh, Phoebe, it's a pleasure, my friend. And um, I love I love this one. I'm usually the one interviewing people. So I love how the tables have been turned on me. So for me today, the shoe's on the other foot. I'm used to being the interviewer. <laughs> Yeah, well, Edzia, you are amazing at that. And I will say you are one of those people that does everything different. And I love that about you. You don't do anything conventional. And that's what's very beautiful. And that's what's really exciting about this episode because it's not conventional. You are out on the street. You are literally out in Sydney walking about. There's so much going on. And I have so many things to ask you that I'm sure my listeners are going to be really excited to find out about as well. So, Ed, let's dive in. Let's let's start with your favorite platform, the platform Ooh. where that not only brings people together, but it's a platform that helps you exceed in business. It's the platform that you use for your lead generation, um, for your personal brand, for your business, for your community, LinkedIn. So, Ed, you you have over 10,000 hours of personal coaching under your belt and you help people with LinkedIn, you help people, you know, globally build their personal brand and their online presence. Can you please share with us what was the pivotal moment that inspired you to help others become LinkedIn users, LinkedIn influencers and and, people that love this platform? Oh, great question, Phoebe. And I get asked this a lot. And uh, hello to our fans out there. Like, share, comment. It's an interesting one. The way it all started for me was that for a while there, I used to, before I became a LinkedIn business networking specialist, I was a marketing consultant and coach for many years. And one of my very, very good friends from Microsoft, who I knew through the business chamber, said several things happened that led me in that direction. Firstly, he said to me, Ed, you should become a LinkedIn consultant. We'll even stick you in our certification program. So I had a a friend of mine from Microsoft openly invite me and suggest the idea. So someone very, very powerful, very high-end manager at Microsoft suggests this to me, which is point one. The second thing that got me there is when I finally got into LinkedIn and started really posting on it, and credit to Lassie for the encouragement as well, people weren't hiring me for marketing help anymore. Everyone started saying, Ed, can you help me with LinkedIn? Can you help me with LinkedIn? So the thing is, if I put a sign on my shop saying I'm selling hamburgers, but everyone sells coffee, everyone buys coffee, I'm switching it to a coffee shop. So it's kind of like that. It was very much what people wanted from me. And and that just sort of drove everything. It drove me to really sort of move on from marketing and become a LinkedIn networking type of character. So that was some of the key influences. Lassie, my friend from LinkedIn and Microsoft, and also to just what people were asking me for. I love that, Ed. I think it's really important that we pivot and and we obviously <laughs> work with the things that we're passionate about and the things that make us shine. And you're obviously very passionate about LinkedIn. Ed, tell us how many times a day, like this is something very unique about you and this is something that you teach as well. But I'd love to know how many times a day do you post on LinkedIn and on average, how many times a week or a month do you reckon you post? Yeah, so I've actually tweaked my strategy about a week ago and my daily impressions have gone from about 10 to 15 a day to about 
25 to 30,000 impressions a day. So I've been really, really going for it. And the thing for me is I've been really going for that sort of playing that A-level sort of influencer game. So I'm actually posting at least 10 times a day, not counting other people, not counting shared content, but I'm actually posting at least 10 times a day. And the thing is, it's very easy posts though. It's nothing too hard. It's more just very quick posts. For example, this is a post now. This is live streaming on LinkedIn right now. So right now I'm actually posting via this link uh, live stream. However, for all the normal, wonderful people out there, posting once a day is a great place to get started. I love that you mentioned normal, Ed, because it's like, well, what is normal? Exactly. You know, and obviously, like the thing, the thing about you, Ed, is you are very unique and eccentric, right? And so posting 10 times a day for you is not a problem because there's always things to post about. Like we go through every day and we go through so much in a day. But most of the time, for example, I'll, I'm just going to share about me. Like most of the time I go, okay, that is Instagram type content. This is probably more Facebook type content. That's probably more TikTok type content. This will be a bit of both. And we kind of filter and we select. Ed, do you think that's necessary? Or do you think that we should start to just be raw and real even on LinkedIn? Because it is, obviously it is a platform that is mostly used to like from a commercial or to advance people's careers and and to a lot of the time people think no this is for business it's got to be professional do we need to be 100% professional when we are on LinkedIn and and that's not to say we just post anything but like where is the line <laughs> yeah well I've got an easy answer to that I think you should be 100% professional on all forms of social media so just to be clear on that one be it TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever you're using, you should be 100% professional because at the end of the day, people have lost their jobs for something they post on Facebook or TikTok. So that's the first thing. You should be very, very professional wherever you post as a full stop. So here's the thing that you've got to remember. The internet lasts forever and stuff you did years ago that you may not be proud of today can haunt you in many personal professional areas. So that's point one, right? The second point is tightening it up more on LinkedIn is LinkedIn is a professional and business platform. So by all means, be raw and authentic in a professional, positive uh, context. Now, here's a very simple example. When I started really taking off on LinkedIn, this doesn't happen anymore, but back in the day, I had a lot of people criticizing me when I started taking off on LinkedIn, saying, Ed, you shouldn't post this way. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Ed, you're just a horrible human being, and I'm just so much better than you, just the usual criticism. And what was interesting about it all is that a lot of people would criticize me for, Ed, your videos are unprofessional and how dare you walk down the street and do a video, Ed, you're, you're just terrible. Then what was interesting about it is the chief operations officer of LinkedIn, the COO, great guy, by the way, not that he's watching, but for years I, I love his work. He started posting videos of him just walking down the street. So he'd just be walking down LinkedIn. He'd be walking down the street. He'd do a quick video. And what was interesting is I went back to a few of the people that criticized me and saying, hang on a sec, you said I was all these things and I'm really dumb. But you've got the chief operations officer of LinkedIn themselves doing the videos that you're condemning. Would you like to comment on that? And guess what they did? Have a well, guess what they did, Phoebe? Oh, I didn't mean that. It just, just distort and deflect. Oh, I didn't mean that, Ed. What I meant was this. Blah, blah, blah. Instead of actually just taking the loss and saying, yeah, Ed, you yeah. got me on that one. They just, just yeah, a typical toxic narcissist. Never take responsibility, just distort and deflect. And it was quite funny, actually, because now everyone's doing it, right? So now everyone is doing that. And it's awesome. And so what I say to everyone watching is, again, I'm a LinkedIn guy, so I'm not going to talk about the other platforms, but I will say this. On LinkedIn, be raw, authentic and real in a professional context and you'll go a long way. I love that, Ed. You, you've you come a really, like, uh, your journey is such a incredible, like, you've had such so many different careers in life. Like, you went from being, uh, you know, like a combat engineer to a marketing mentor to LinkedIn, you know, expert. H how did your military, I want to know about your military experience. How did that experience shape your approach to what you do today? Yeah, it's funny you say that. So, my military uh, policing experience has been very, very essential for my success today because, and it's funny, I was actually having, I've had a chat with a lot of military and police veterans about this topic. Military and police veterans either become real, after they finish, they either become complete losers or they become really, really hyper successful people, right? Which is quite 
tragic and good at the same time. And what I found is, is that when you've had that military or policing type of background, it makes you very focused and determined. And it also helps you get through bad days. So a lot of people say to me, hey, you're just so consistent, your discipline's so high and amazing. I actually don't feel that way. To me, I actually feel quite slack, right? So it's kind of funny how the way that I feel compared to the way that people perceive you, but it gives you that discipline focused style. And also it makes it gives you that resilience too. So when when I started posting on LinkedIn, I've always looked at the data. My numbers were fantastic. And this is what a lot of my critics back at the time didn't really understand is they would just open their mouths and say stuff to me. I, I'm actually quite into numbers. I look at sales. I look at leads. I look at my number of impressions. I look at where they're coming from. I actually do a lot of data analysis every day, right? And I had all the data. So basically, I've got the receipts. I knew my videos are performing well, and I know my potential customers are seeing them. I know I'm getting leads. So when people criticize me on that, they're sort of criticizing me against that level of findings. And that's where the military policing uh, um, thinking came in. It's like, hang on, I really don't care what you think because you're just an amateur who's either making stuff up, reading stuff off the internet and claiming that you know what you're doing, and I'm just not putting up with you anymore. So I suppose it's that grit and resilience. And just saying to people, yeah, you know what, I'm done. And interestingly, I felt it was very much that sort of military side that came out in me. So when this one character who used to criticize all my videos, when the CEO of LinkedIn started doing the videos and I asked them for comment, they weren't too happy after that. So that's a very, I think, a military policing thing. Hang on, you said this. Here's the proof it's not true. Explain yourself. And of course they wouldn't. Like the, the correct answer would have been, yeah, Edge, you win that one. That's all I had to say. But no, they had to distort, deflect. Typical uh, toxic person. So I just unfriended them and never spoke to them again. And guess what? They quit LinkedIn eventually later and just went back to work. So I guess the test of time won that one for me. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing about social media is you always get judged by the people that aren't doing right but when you put yourself in the shoes and and this i'm just talking to everyone now i think when you put yourself in the shoes of the person that does put themselves out there is that like it's all sorts of challenges you you know the very beginning of your journey you overcome challenges of looking at yourself in the camera Um, yeah (laughs) right you you overcome the fear of judgment you yeah. overcome that that voice inside your head that says, I've got nothing to share that's been t- said before, that's been done before. And you've got to overcome a lot of these challenges. And, I, and I'm guessing that's stuff that you've done before as well, but in a different sense, you know, either in the military or whatever career you've had, we've got to overcome these challenges. And there's nothing easy about putting yourself out there in, in the limelight in front of hundreds of thousands of people that will yeah. view your stuff and yes. I think it takes a lot of courage Ed. I actually really admire your work I think what I love about you is as I as I keep saying you are eccentrically unique and you don't hide it and you you just show up as you and you've got your own style you've got your own strategy and it works for you and so what's important in marketing is it's not about I mean you've just hit the nail on the head numbers and metrics is everything yep. we've got to look at what's bringing us leads where people come from what's driving traffic to our sites our landing pages but we've got to do what works because if we just follow what everyone else says like say someone tells you go and do seo but seo doesn't bring in leads and your website doesn't convert but social media does why would you change up your strategy just because something is right yeah, yeah. I, I love it, Phoebe. And the thing that I find, and that's that's why we get along so well, because we're both data-driven people. I don't, whatever I do, I try and analyze it, right? I try and get as much data as possible to say, am I on the right track or the wrong track? And what I find fascinating is a lot of people will say stuff, but they don't take accountability for what they're saying. This is the thing that really started to red peel me on this one, is that all the people criticizing me aren't doing that well. And when I actually get some data and show them, they don't take any accountability for it. Then I realize, hang on, all these people are just making stuff up. They're just reading stuff off the internet. They're just making stuff up. They're just, their their advice is based on their feelings, not actual logical, tangible proof. And here's a big thing that I love about you, Phoebe, is you and I are very similar. We both analyze the data and take it from there. And to anyone watching, my big advice to you is when you start posting on whatever platform, obviously I love LinkedIn the most, is look at the data, look at your views, where are they coming from, how are your leads going, what's actually going on, because the data 
is what tells the ultimate story. Very, very important. Absolutely. It's all about the data. Now, now pivoting back to your amazing career, um, you know, you've worked in the federal government on drug enforcement and organised crime task forces. You've, you know, <laughs> you're, you're a top Google guide in Australia as well, which is just a random fact I wanted to throw in. And and you're a proud Christian and you're a father, you're a husband. You juggle a lot of things. What Too many has things. Been... <laughs> this very is really... poorly, but I'm trying. Very poorly, <laughs> but I'm trying. <laughs> and this is a big question. And um, what has been your biggest challenge in, I'm going to say, the last 30 years of life because you don't look yeah. a day over 30. Oh, um, awesome. But what has been... And you're probably going to rack, need to rack your brain because, you know, okay. challenges, every every season there are challenges. But what, what yeah. do you think is the biggest one that you've overcome to get to where you are today? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is being confident in doing my own thing. So for many years, I always wanted to go in business and do my own thing, but I kept holding myself back, waiting for that perfect time, waiting for something to happen. And my biggest thing is really going off and doing my own thing. And that's been a huge that was a huge challenge for me. And when I sort of broke free of the matrix, as it were, and did my own thing, that's when life truly, truly started to happen. And then I realized all of a sudden, hang on, there are so many, it could, you could be watching now, and I applaud you for watching. There could be, there's so many great people out there, including a lot of people watching, who are like, your mind is in a prison. You're in prison. And I used to be very much like this. You're imprisoned by everyone's opinion of you. So as you're not really living your own life, there's this mental prison that's been erected around your mind and everything you're doing is being controlled and regulated. And when you start breaking down that mental prison and saying, hang on, I can sort of define how I think. And you know what? I'm not interested in what people think of me anymore. I want to go my own way and do my own thing. And again, one of the funniest things that I find is the people that will so-called mentally imprison you, when you start pushing back on them, they often don't like that. And they never, never, ever take any responsibility. They never take accountability. And that's the biggest thing I've learned is the people who criticised me that made me stay small, they're the ones that never took any accountability when I pointed out all their flaws and errors. And this is my big bit of advice to anyone watching is if someone's unfairly, right, someone's trying to protect you, fine. Someone's unfairly controlling you you probably want to really double check your relationship with that person because I bet you that person has no idea what they're doing and that it's going to lead you off up the garden path at best. Wow, that's a, that's a huge one that you've just shared, Ed. Like I, I applaud you for, for going down that, one, that path because there's actually a lot of similarities in our journey, like mm. you say. And I think for me, like growing up as a half of my family, are Chinese. The other half are East Timorese Portuguese. So we have a, you know, we, we have a cultural mix and, and very, we're very family oriented. But what happens is when you grow up in community and you grow out of that mold and you start forming your own identity and you start doing things differently, thinking differently, talking differently as you grow, you know, people will notice that shift along the way, along the journey. And I think I think for me in recent times, I've been breaking out again. Mm. And, you know, that you're, you're always breaking out. You break out when you go out and go into business. You break out when you go into a different field. Um, you break out when you leave university or high school or yeah. workplace. But for me, my recent one would definitely be breaking out of that mold of being the, you know, that compliant, that yes person, that one yeah. Others and wants to make it good, but still authentically knows what they're after, knows what he or she really truly is and is about. And I think there's there, there's a lot of setbacks that uh, and a lot of resistance and pushback mm. that you'll get when you are breaking out and and becoming who you really are, isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of resistance and setbacks. And it, it's a great way forward for everyone, you know, as you push back and push out and be who you want to be. What it is is that the right people will come along for the journey and the wrong people will leave you behind. But I will bring this up again. I love the word accountability, right? I love, it's one of my favourite words is accountability, right? Is being responsible for what you say. 
And where I find it funny, again, all these people that wag their fingers, and I bet you in your life too, I could, uh, I know this because we're friends, but I would say this anyway, even though I didn't know you, is that all, think about this, and I say this to everyone, yeah, yeah. think of all the people in, in your life that are pointing fingers at you and saying this and that about you. How does it go when you point the finger back on them? How does it go when you hold them accountable? How does it go when you ask them about their mistakes? And these are the two things these type of people do is distort, deflect, distort and deflect. Oh, I didn't say that, Phoebe. What I meant was X, Y, Z, shifting the goalposts or whatever. And deflect, well, you just don't know what you're talking about. I never said that. It's that real sort of lack of accountability. And I love holding people accountable. And, and I love being held accountable. And I love holding other people accountable as well. But the people I find who like the finger wagging and pointing at you, they don't like accountability too much. Why do you think that is, Phoebe? Yeah, I mean, I talk about above and below the line. And yeah. um, above above the line is ownership, responsibility, and accountability. Yeah. Whereas below the line is, you know, living um, in a victim mentality, blame, not having yeah. accountability. And and it's yeah. very different when you start being above the line because you have to start taking ownership yeah. of your life. What yeah. whatever circumstances that you track that happen, you yeah. got to start taking ownership of it. Whether yeah. you know whether it was your fault or not. It, it's still you're the only person that can yeah. take responsibility right so there is yeah. yeah i really admire that m mindset and i think what you've shared um you know everyone can take some, some something away from that yeah. and that's why you're so powerful phoebe because again that's probably why we one of the reasons why we get along is you know it's um i won't say the s word because i don't like swearing on live streams but I, i'm a bit of I know you're going to, I know your opinion of me is going to love, but I'm a huge Dr. Phil fan, right? Massive Dr. Phil fan. And quite often he'll say things, you need to own your S word, right? And I love it. Like Dr. Phil will always talk about own your S word. Don't agree with that. You've got to own. A, if you've made a mistake, you need to own it. B, at the same time, if people are saying all the stuff to you, you need to hold them to account as well. And I just find it funny. I find, the moment I hold someone, if someone holds me to account, I'll hold them back to account, which is great, right? Only fair. The moment they don't accept the accountability, um, I'm kind of done with them. I just put a line through them because I'll see them as a toxic person who's trying to hold my life back. And I don't like that. And I don't like toxic people too much, Phoebe. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Ed. Yeah. Now, Ed, going back, to, going back to business and LinkedIn yeah. for a moment, um, yes. you know, obviously you know, you work with high profile companies, you work with clients from all over, the, all over the globe. You've got a lot of unique perspectives and insights to share. You've got a lot of coaching and mindset stuff to share as well. When you see the people that succeed versus the people yeah. that not, what yes. do you think is the biggest attribute that the We'll talk about the success first. What do you think is the big, biggest attribute that a successful person holds that someone that doesn't necessarily succeed does, you know, has missed out on? Like what is that mindset or attribute that they hold that, that you reckon you could share with us today? They're very internally driven people, as in they, they know what they want to do and they're going for it, and they're not too preoccupied with what everyone thinks about them. And simple as that. Mm, yeah, that's a great answer. And so what do you think stops people from success? Yeah, oh, heaps of things which are far beyond me. It's almost a Jordan Peterson question, right? <laughs> so maybe ask Jordan Peterson. But look, the, the biggest things that I've seen is people don't know what they want to do, which is a huge problem. That's problem one. And problem number two, they're not very, they're not really taking any action. They're unclear on what they want to achieve. And to be honest, some people are just really lazy. I find that very interesting. Like, if I think of all the successful people I know, whatever area, health, fitness, LinkedIn, you know, Facebook, whatever, it doesn't matter. A lot of people who don't get very far in life, I hate to say it, they're just lazy people. They're not that motivated. They're very ho-hum. They don't do any work. Uh, and also, too, I'll say it again, lack of accountability. You know, they're very much, hang on, my life isn't working out because of all these other people. Now, that might be true. You might be surrounded by absolute morons who are holding you back, and I appreciate that, and I've been there. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with you. It's all right to sit there and blame everyone around you, but at some point, 
you're the one choosing to hang out with those people. So you need to start making some choices to get your life going where it wants. So that's some of the, what do you think, Phoebe? That's some of my commentary. I don't want to go with Jordan Peterson on you, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I actually really agree. I, I think what you've said is, is a, a very big thing. And I think also another one I would probably add is yeah. distractions. I think a lot yeah. of there are a lot of people that are getting distracted by yeah because there's a lot of opportunities out there now Ed like there's so many different opportunities yeah. where it where people get distracted by like the easier path and people also get tricked into thinking that you know they're sold this idea that yes you can make a lot of money really quickly by doing this there's just all these different ads all these yeah. different distractions bright shiny things opportunities coming on yeah. that people forget to focus on the one thing their purpose and they forget to focus on the thing that really moves the needle so yeah. I, I and I'm, I'm going to bring this back to marketing because that's my area of expertise but yeah. for example Let's just talk about marketing. Like there are so many different ways to market a business. You've got Google, you've got ads, you've got this funnel, you've got that program you can launch, you've got that, um, you know, you, you've got social media, content, YouTube, several things, right? You've also got several different, um, you know, like not only your funnels, but you've got all these, for example, when you have a lead and it comes through and you don't follow the structure, of how you close that deal and you start changing up the way, you know, you you do things, that's all destruction. That's all moving away from something that works. It's like having a formula. I think that would be one of the key aspects. And I and I this is me speaking for myself because I I am definitely bright shiny thing, like curious and I'm gonna try new things type person. But one of the things that I learned in business in the last six to seven years is focusing on what moves the needle and what really drives growth and revenue and focusing. Like once once I'm focused, wow, you know, like so much can shift so quickly. But when I'm not, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> oh, aren't we all like that, Phoebe? Aren't we all like that? And I'm going to say, I love your rawness and leadership. That's why everyone loves you. You know, you're very focused. You're doing your own thing. As the old saying goes, uh, follow the success. If there's a part of your life that's working out, there's clues there. Why are you succeeding in this part of your life? You know, follow the success, as I always say. If you're, if you're just busy losing and losing over and over again, time to do a bit of a shake-up. Time to rethink what you're doing. Time to do something new, something in time to do something different. But if you're winning somewhere, you sort of follow the clues that success leaves and you take it from there so i love your style phoebe you are a powerful lady very powerful inspirational lady oh thank you ed and so are you i mean you're very influential and what i love about you is you're you're very big on helping people and i think that's what makes you um so attractive and that's what I, and i think ultimately that's where your success comes in because you focus mm. on others and not yourself and when you focus on helping others success is inevitable i i believe i mean Obviously, there's lots of different things that you've got to get right along the way, but ultimately, we've got to focus on others because it comes through and it's something that people notice when you make it about yourself, whereas when oh, yeah. you are focusing on others, people can feel that. And, yeah. and I think that's the ultimate ingredient, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's the uh, narcissist word, right? It's the whole word narcissism. And we've been talking about this a lot lately. Narcissism has been a real word that's come up in our culture. Yeah. It's been a real talked about word over the past few years, because I think a lot of people are recognizing A, what narcissism is, but B, how to spot narcissists. Absolutely. And I think that that word is something that gets thrown around a lot as well. So I, th I think one of the things that we've got to keep in mind is we've got to know how to spot that, but we also need to be very careful with, with how that word is used and whether it's thrown around. We I think we've lost Ed for a moment. Seems like he's just stepped into a, a blind spot on the internet. But uh, yeah, I, I'm a big, I'm a very big believer that we've got to obviously be very careful with the way we label things the way we label others and um and how we how we go about it 
So guys, for those that are that that is still tuning in, uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing Ed Zia for a long time now, for quite a number of years. And what is very special about Ed is is his heart for people, and um, and he's very very authentic and 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 very aligned with his purpose, which is great. Here we go. We've got Ed back. Hello, Trump again. Hello. Hey, Phoebe. I have no idea what happened. That's all right. It it happens. We just got to keep rolling with it. Now I was just sharing. I was just sharing know, about how we my, met. My whole in- my whole internet stream died, but I, everyone can see me all right. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is lagging a little bit, but we've got Streamyard, which is great. So you know the quality will catch up, and we've got the recording, which is fantastic. No, I was just sharing it about okay. the fact that you and I, you and I met during. Um, roughly it was during COVID or, or just before, a little bit before. And and what is very special and unique about you is the fact that you are so authentic and you are so about others, you're so about giving. And one of the things that where you give the most is you have this network and this community, a huge, a very strong network, like you have consistently run weekly dual webinars, Mondays and Thursdays, and and you fill the room and you have this ability ed this like incredible attractive ability to fill a room you run meetups in melbourne in brisbane in sydney in canberra all over all over australia and you have consist we've lost ed again but ed has consistently grown his network over the years and that's that's really incredible that's something that um, you know, I really admire because being a leader is obviously not easy. Like when you when you lead or you run events and you are bringing people together, there's so many different avenues, different aspects that you've got to take care of. And to be consistent at that is something that not a lot of people can do. Because think about it, we we've got a host the event, find the venue, bring the people, market the event. We've got to, you know, organize catering sometimes, um, food, wine, drinks, etc. And we've got to make sure that people keep coming back. And obviously there's something that is working and that Ed is doing right because otherwise his meetups wouldn't be growing every single month. And so one of the things I, I guess you know, I want to share on this on this episode today is the fact that when you are working at something, whether it's an event, whether it's a marketing strategy, whether it's growing your online business or your online community, whether it's selling a course, we've got to be consistent at it. Because if we work at something and we go about it once or twice and, and it fails and we don't come back and fix it or keep improving I apologize. it, it never grows. And that's the thing. Hey, Ed. Uh, Phoebe, I apologise. I think I get it now. Love your work, Phoebe. You're amazing. And I apologise to our wonderful fans. Internet's been playing up on me all morning. That's okay, Ed. I was just sharing about your your meetups and I was just talking about the fact that it, the key reason I've seen you grow is because you are so consistent at – making sure that each and every week, no matter what, throughout COVID, throughout Christmas, Easter, breaks, etc., you consistently show yeah. up like 365 days a year. I've seen you show up online every single week and you run your meetups every single month. You run your webinars every single week. It's amazing. Like I, you're one of the few people I've seen consistently show up that way. How do you do it? I mean, do you take holidays first of all? That's question number one. And question number two is how do you do it? Like how do you consistently show up? Yeah. I think it's uh, so two answers to that. A, my life is kind of a working holiday, right? So while I'm on holidays, I'll still do live streams. So my life is more of a hybrid. And that's how it is for a lot of business people. Then you stop, your life is a hybrid of business and work, right? So that's answer number one. Answer number two, example, I love running networking Zims every Monday and Thursday if I can do it and I'm just used to it. So me, it's about having, you know, a lot of cool stuff coming out, events that keeps me going. So if you're going to be at lines or face to face, is that the big Yeah, so I, that's think, good. I think um, I'm losing, I think I'm losing you a bit there, Ed, but one of the things that I picked up, which I think is 
is the key is that you really love what you do uh, and that is such an important thing yes because if you didn't feel like doing it and you were you were pushing uphill yeah. I, I think it would be very hard to sustain something like that and so what's really the key that I'm hearing is you love what you do you're used to it because you because you, you've trained he's trained himself to consistently show up and and it's something that you've got to be passionate about so I, I think th those are the keys that, that is one of the reasons why Ed succeeds with running these events these meetups these webinars and he's con you know he's consistently growing it and I can see that each and every single month and and when I do show up or when I do attend I have noticed that his events his networking is growing and that's amazing you know running a community and being a business networking leader is something that is obviously very fulfilling because you get to meet a lot of people you get to share a lot of stories you get to uh you know interact with people from all over the globe every you know different type of race gender age and uh, you know and it's very fun so I, it looks like we've got ed back again <laughs> Um, but one of the things as well, hey, Ed. <laughs> now, Ed, last question for you because I know you are out and about and, you know, hopefully the internet will hold up for this. But I've got the one last qu interview question for you for this podcast. And that is what are your top tips for the people that are listening, that are watching, that are looking to start their own online community or their own business or their own event or running you know, running an event perhaps, what are your top tips for someone that's looking to start or looking to scale and how can they improve, you know, their current, uh, you know, events or their current networking or webinars? Hey, great hey. question. I got you back. Great question. So before my internet completely dies, here's my big thing. Start by running events in your local area. You might, if you're online, you might run a networking Zoom or just a Zoom to catch up and connect with your friends. You might run a local coffee meetup or something like that. You might even run an informal gathering with your friends, but running events is a fantastic way of getting started. And they can just be four or five of you or something like that. Start there because as you talk to people and get connected, great things amazingly happen. I love that, Ed. I love it so much. Thank you so much. Ed, thank you so much for jumping on this show today. Um, you know, you are an amazing guy. I, I love what you're doing. I'm a big, I'm a big advocate for your network and um and, and your event, of course. And and I'm a big fan of the fact that you put yourself out there, you're raw, you're vulnerable, and you're super authentic. And I hope that you keep that up. I can't wait to see you at your next Melbourne meetup. Um, I know that you've got Sydney this coming Friday, which I may be. I'm currently in, in Canberra, so I may be passing. I'm going up to Sydney at the end of the week. But if not, I will see you in Melbourne for sure. Uh, do you have any final words for those that are listening? Any final, um, you know, tip of the week or message that you want to share? Oh, love it. And thank you, everyone. My big advice to you is really think through what you want to do and go for it. And how many of your friends can you bring uh, with you? And also to everyone, my big tip is connect with Phoebe Lay. Phoebe Lay is amazing and I love her powerful work. So do your own thing. And connect with Phoebe Lee. Great place to start. Thank you, Ed. Have an amazing day and I'll speak to you soon. Love your work, everyone. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Phoebe. Stay awesome all. Love your work. See you, bye. See you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you inspired to thrive. 